All right, we're going to get into uh, the interview now, but I'm going to pray first, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, there are so many voices today, uh, not just in our culture, but in the world. Uh, God, over 4,000 registered religions around the globe, and so many narratives, and so many conversations about you, and even a multiplicity of gods. Lord, where do we begin to understand what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, what is close to the truth, what is far from the truth. God, we believe you wrote a book, and we believe that you sent one of the persons of the Trinity, Jesus, yourself, God, to this earth. And so, Lord, we ask that we would hear from you today. By your Spirit, would you speak into this, this group of people who have gathered here in person and online, and may we hear what is the truth about you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is my friend and yours, Tony. And uh, for those who do not know Tony, you've got to get to know him. I've known Tony for about eight or nine years, and he's a wonderful fellow. Uh, he and his wife, Sarah, and their boy, Nolan. Um, but I know Tony doesn't want this to be about him, so we'll get right to Tony has been... Uh, teaching our oldest kids Sunday school class every last Sunday of the month. Tony, why did you feel a motivation to, to do that? Why have you been doing that for the last number of months? So this may come as no surprise to some, but having kids really changes your life. <laughs> and so ever since having my son Nolan has really maybe think about the youth of today, the next generation, and just seeing where things are going. And as being their age once, of course, I had moved around quite a few times from church to church to church over the, over the years. And I never really had that safe place to call home, to grow in my faith. And so when this opportunity came up to be um, a Sunday school teacher, I really took that seriously and I was like, this, this would be a really cool opportunity. So I prayed a lot about it and really kind of felt um, drawn into uh, doing, doing this for the kids and trying to offer them a safe place for them to explore their faith, grow their faith, and, uh, and be able to offer that to something that I never really had as a, as a kid growing up myself. Great. Great. So why have you journeyed with them recently? into this topic of world religions. Like, why that topic? So, in our first class we had with the kids was really more about getting to know them, where they were in their journey, what kind of questions they had, what they were curious about, what they kind of knew, and then just kind of really kind of pitching it to them, be like, hey, what, what do you guys kind of want to know? Like, <laughs> you know, we're all kind of new at this together a little bit. Um, and the two things that, that popped up right away was they were really curious about heaven and hell, uh, naturally. And I think that that's a pretty common thing at their age to be curious about heaven and hell. And so we actually started off talking about those two topics. Now, in that first class as well, I had remembered the many conversations that I've had previously with people, either of other faiths or, or, or not. And the question was always, oh, just all faiths are the same. Uh, you know, you all believe in heaven and God, and there you go. And so that kind of question kind of came to my mind when I'm talking to, the, talking to them. And I was like, hey, do you guys want to know about other faiths or other religions? Like, was this something that you guys are curious about? And, and they, they were really receptive to that. They were really curious. They, they were really excited about, oh, this is actually something we could actually maybe even talk about. Uh, and so that's how we kind of got on to that, that, uh, this concept or this, this topic that we're on now. So how do you prepare to talk with the kids about, you know, Hinduism or Buddhism or Islam? How, how do you go about that? So at the end of every class, we put it to a vote to the kids. And we're like, what religion do you guys want to talk about next? And we've really tried hard to look at... Uh, faiths or religions that they'll come across either um, 
in, uh, in the schoolyards, at the community centers, and their schools, and their playgrounds. Like, what, where, what are, where are the, these, these religions that they're going to be coming across? And let's, let's try and focus on those ones to start. And that's how we've been kind of going about, and that's how we've been able to decide which religion we do month to month. Once the kids decide what, what religion they want to look into next, I'll then take that and I'll go try and find somebody to interview that knows about that religion or is, is, um, is a believer in that religion that I can go interview and talk with. Uh, from there, I'll kind of do a bit of a, a, a deep dive into the religion itself. And then from there, I'll kind of do more of a generalized Google search about the religion, uh, the, the history of the religion, to try and create as much of an unbiased viewpoint, educational viewpoint about it that I can possibly present to the kids. And so this generally takes me about 11 to 10 to 12 hours a month to be able to compile this data, this information. And I share with the kids as well, like, I am not... I don't know everything about these religions. I'm doing my best to try and, and, and bring about as much of an educational point of view to these kids as I, as I can. Um, and because there's so much information that I'm presenting to them, I know, like for myself, I find this all fascinating. I, I, I love this. I, I, could just, I could just go on so, so much on, on this type of thing. But I know for the kids, if I were to tell them in this raw form, I'm just going to put them to sleep. And so... <laughs> and or even yeah yeah and so I really got to try and break this down into bite-sized pieces for them to be able to grasp to understand and there's a few key talking points that we go about month to month that we look at ever at all these religions but even if we take a look at Hinduism depending on who you ask there's one one god or there's 330 million gods and so I went down that rabbit hole of I'm gonna look at all these gods and try to understand each one of these <laughs> Very quickly, hours flew by. And so that's where that interview process with that person is so critical for me to be able to ask them questions about their religion or their faith or somebody that knows more about it than me so I can understand and break it down for these kids to be also be able to understand and then be able to ask mm -hmm. questions and create that conversation. Okay, so we're going off script. Where do you find these people? Um, so... Interestingly enough, because of what I do at work, I've met a lot of people. Can I interrupt? Yeah. So have you heard the expression, lights, camera, action? <laughs> it doesn't happen without Tony. He's the lights guy. <laughs> He's the lights guy in movies and commercials and shows and so on. So, so you meet lots of liberal thinking, non-traditional folks yep. in those settings. Right? And so I've been able to build a lot of genuine relationships with these people and so as i've been going about this topic i've just been able to kind of give friends a call and actually it, it, it's funny enough with with my buddhist friend that i was talking to him about he's actually been really curious about the bible now now that i'm i'm taking a deep dive into him he's like oh this is fascinating oh i'm, I'm really curious about the bible and so i we've, we've actually been doing almost monthly get-togethers now just talking about the Bible and God and Jesus and and uh, it's just been really it's been fascinating. He's the one calling me up now, being like, "I just finished this latest book that you told me about. Let's get together. Let's have coffee. Let's talk." And I'm just like, "Yeah, let's mm -hmm. do it." Mm -hmm. So that's 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 kind of how I've been able to. And fortunately, I have I've, I have enough enough acquaintances. I've been able to call up enough mm -hmm. people for for those faiths or different religions so far. Good. Good. Well, thinking of the kids again, how are they engaging with these conversations? Is it a one way street, or are they talking back? So, before we dove into other religions, we really needed to make sure we understood what the Bible has to say, what we believe. And so, we kind of picked out key points in the Bible that, that we want to make sure we're all on the same page about, whether it's the, the historical perspective, it's who God is, who Jesus is, you know, the fact we have a relationship with him, um, and these, these types, of, types of points. And then see if we're able to apply these to other faiths or other religions and make sure that we, we as we're talking about them to get the kids to also be thinking about this as well and being able to be like oh yeah I see this in, in uh, Islam but not necessarily um, or, or back and forth and, 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 and so we, we look for these key some of these key, key pointers at the end of every class as well we always talk about why are we doing this 
why are we doing why are why are we going in and looking at other religions and so one of the things is that we're trying to challenge our own self we're trying to challenge our own own faith to grow our own faith and grow it stronger to to know what we believe and not just say we believe it also as we meet these people on the playgrounds and in our schools and our community centers that we don't have a media bias we don't have a social social bias we don't we don't look at them and be like oh they're different i'm just going to play with people that are like-minded and friends that by understanding what these people believe whether they're they're, they're atheists or buddhists or whoever that we can in knowing these things we can find some common ground we can understand we can play with them we can hang out with them that that those differences those walls those barriers that are built up because of the world around us can come down a little bit and that we can share and talk and be with and, 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 um, and work with them. And so it's been really cool seeing them start to kind of grasp on these concepts and even, even start being curious about the Bible more. And even in the last class about Buddhism, you know, they actually re- redirected away at the very end of being like, why did Jesus have to die on the cross for my sins? Right? And it's cool seeing them start to grasp some of these concepts, start to be curious about more about the Bible as well. Not only does it help me be able to create some further classes, which is helpful, um, but it just, it just it gives them, it's, it's fun seeing them have a safe place to start asking some of these questions, be curious about what they believe, and, and actually see them finally like really come to start understanding these concepts. And it isn't just something that's just said or preached or, or talked at. They can actually really kind of grasp these things. Good. I'm thinking a lot of people are going to want to be in Tony's class the last Sunday of every month. Um, do you have to become an expert in these world religions in order to talk about them? I mean, I'm thinking about the kids, but also the folks who are in these world religions. Like, it's almost sounding like I got to do a deep dive into research about all these things before I can have a conversation. So, an expert, no but a little bit of research doesn't hurt. However, the research has really been able to help me understand that question of like, are all world religions the same and be able to to answer that. But you don't need to be an expert to share your faith with somebody. And for the longest time for myself, as I was growing up, I I truly believed, I truly believed, I had to know the Bible inside and out. I had to know the historical context. I had to be able to have a sermon ready to speak to somebody and convert them right then and there. And if I didn't, I failed as a Christian. And that was really, really hard for me for a long time growing up. And so I avoided talking to people because of that, because I always, I needed to know more. I needed to go to the next Bible study. I needed to know this next concept. I needed to know more about God. I needed to have a deeper relationship with him. I needed to be 100% perfectly clear clear myself with all my own issues. Mm -hmm. And so as I started talking with people, I found so much of all that stuff I learned, though important and really cool, was not the key fundamental of what those conversations were. And that as I would dive into conversations with people, so much of it was just being genuine and loving on that person, being curious about what that person's going through, what that person is about, who that person is. And by doing that, I just found that, A, I knew everything that I really needed to know to be able to share with them, Um, but then also that those barrier walls kind of came down that it allowed for more of an opportunity for me to share who God was and who the Bible is to them and just see how much more receptive they were um, to hearing about the gospel. And, and I, love, I love talking to people in the LGBT community and atheists about, about God. I, I, just, I, just, I really have a heart for, for, the, for, for them. And, and I've got two friends in particular, one on each, each side there. And, and having though and their previous experiences have been pretty pretty tough and so i once again i just i i didn't even go about wanting to push anything on them i was just genuine about i just want to get to know you who you are what you're about and it was really cool seeing how much of an interest they then had about what i believed afterwards 
And I found that really cool. And even in, even in my one my one friend in particular, who's an atheist, we would go on long car rides across the country for work, and we would just spend hours talking about the differences of, of atheism and, and Christianity. And though those conversations would get heated, as you can imagine, being in a in a tight confined space up north driving for hours. Um, we would always be able to get out of that vehicle at the end, grab our Tim Hortons, give each other a hug and shake hands mm. and then be able to get back in the car and then talk about politics for the next four or five hours. <laughs> so so that, it's, just, it's just amazing that when you are genuine with somebody and loving on somebody, what that effect can have on, mm. on, on them. That's great. Does anyone have a loony or a toonie on them? Could I borrow it? You, you, you likely will get it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is, what is this loony worth? Go ahead, shout it out. Actually, no. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought Eldon or, or Claire might know. It, it's worth whatever the alloy, you know, bronzed, electroplated piece of nickel is worth, which is probably 10 cents. There is value behind this somewhere in the Federal Reserve in Ottawa. I don't know how that works. I don't even know if they know how that works, but, <laughs> but somehow that works. There's value behind that. And there's no value at all anymore because there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Having said that, you and I can have confidence and faith that this will buy a value, a dollar's worth of value of goods and services. It doesn't buy much today, but we, we have faith in that. And I mean, I've heard that illustration before, but I thought of it again when, when Tony just said, like, we can share our faith. We don't have to know all that backstory stuff good to know it yes but to share our faith here's what jesus is to me here's who he is to me here's what he does in my life that's your story that's what you can share with anyone and that's that's kind of baseline is what you're saying um here's a question if people want to speak with you afterwards and hear some of the questions that you actually do ask in the interviews with people from world religions, could they do that? Sure. Yeah, you're open to that? Great. Um, I have read that there are right around 4,200 religions in the world, and we just apparently this last week crossed 8 billion people in the population of the planet. 85% of that 8 billion identify with one of those 4,200 religions. A lot of people, this is profound. This is something new. When I was talking to an Islam man saying, you don't have to work for salvation, hit him, it was just, he couldn't speak. It didn't even register that he didn't have to work for his salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, he diverted onto another more political conversation, which is fine. But very quickly, just something that's as simple as you don't have to work for your salvation. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. It's powerful. Um, last week, I showed a picture of that someone took when I proposed to Karen 40 years ago. What I didn't tell you was, just after that photo, before I, I asked her the question, would she marry me, I handed her a cookbook. And I said, Karen, there are a lot of really great recipes in this cookbook. And I'm hoping over the next 40 to 50 years that you will make these for me. And if you do them well, like you know the way I love apple crisp and turkey lasagna, and Various things. Uh, if you do those well, <laughs> then I will fully accept you as my wife. So on that basis, will you marry me? Can you imagine if I'd asked that way? <laughs> Can you imagine if that was a proposal? But that's kind of the proposal of, of religion. Will you engage for the rest of your life in this and the acceptance by the deity or deities will be at the end, maybe? So it's very different, whereas Christianity, the, the, the engagement is from the beginning, the acceptance is from the beginning, 
based on the work of Christ. So here's the big question that's asked in the West. Aren't all religions leading to God? So, like you said, that's a very Western-based question. Because if we take a look at, like, Catholicism or Christianity or Islam, yes. But if we take a look at Eastern religions, whether it be Hinduism or Buddhism, um, we don't see that, right? Like, you know, with Buddhists, it's, you know, it's that enlightenment. Or with Hinduism, it's like, is it one, one god or is it 330 million gods I'm trying to go towards? So it's a very, it's a very Western kind of question to kind of ask, and it's, it's, very, um, it's very open to many things depending on where you're kind of looking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the time we have left, um, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Um, thinking about the young people, but everyone listening here today, just so we understand, like, what is the gospel? And you've already kind of talked about the differences, but I think it'll really emerge as you explain that. Yeah, so that we've all false, that we all have sinned, that we believe in Jesus and what he did on the cross for me, that we can ask and repent of our sins and receive God, that he is our Lord and Savior, and that we can have a relationship with him, that he wants to have a relationship with you, Specifically with you. Doesn't matter what you've done, he wants to have a relationship with you. And so I want to encourage you that whether you're a new believer or whether you've been a believer for 60 years, that if there is that person at work, at school, that friend down the street, that you know you've been hesitant to go and have a conversation about to go have that conversation, but be genuine about that. It's not necessarily, oh, I have to convert this person right, right today, you know, or I have to follow, I have to work with this, this person for 40 or 50 years. No, just being genuine and love on that person. And it might surprise you with how much information you do truly know. And it might surprise you that when you're loving on somebody, when you're, you're asking somebody else questions, when you're being curious about somebody else, you might, be, you might be surprised at how much they turn around and be curious about you and what you know. And, and then just letting God, you know, take that conversation from there, right? Whether it's, a, you know, I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about him or I'm just, you know, I'm just going to just ask one or two things and then... The conversation ends, and that's fine. And then let God work in that person's life moving forward. But it's amazing what you probably already know. Mm -hmm. And you won't really realize that until you start having those conversations. Yeah. Whether they're a believer, or sorry, whether they're an unbeliever or, or, or another religion, that is just, it's just really cool seeing what happens when you, when you really love on somebody else and you're genuine about it. It's good. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed processing something this way. The object of salvation is God. Like, that's the focus. And, and faith has that as its object, God. The, the means of salvation is faith. The means of salvation is faith. The basis of salvation, though, is the work of Christ, the blood of Christ, not my work all his and that's the basis then of my acceptance uh, with god um i was going to ask you something else off script but now it's gone <laughs> but thank you tony this has been wonderful and uh i think what i've enjoyed too in processing this with you even before today is that just a renewed appreciation that as i deeply dive into my acceptance by god now I am motivated all the more to love him, to obey him, to serve him, but not so that at the end of my life I find out if I was accepted, but because I am. I just want to respond in that way. And so it doesn't become a duty every day. You know, it becomes, again, a delight to follow him. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Tony, so much. Can we give Tony a hand for all the things he's done here? Oh, before we go, I want to ask, you had asked that Judy would read that. 
Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you are saved through faith. This is not of yourselves, not by works, so that no one can boast. It's a gift of God. Why is that verse important? And I, I understand you share that with the kids quite a bit. Jumping back to the earlier question, it's really profound. It's, it's really straight. It's really blunt in, in a lot of the other religions where we see how much it is about works, how much it is about you have to do X and then you should get Y. We see this so much and it is so ingrained in, 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 into, these, into these religions that we see. Mm-hmm. And it's just so hopeful to see that God is like, no, <laughs> no. I've sent my son to die for you, for your sins, that if you believe in me and repent of your sins, I can guarantee you eternal life. You don't have to wait till the end. You don't have to donate. You don't have to do all these other stuff. And, and for me, it was just interesting that as we kept on doing another religion after another religion after another religion after another religion, that we just saw this so clear that it was faith plus works or works. And eternal life was always based off of you. And even though they would say faith was still a part of it, that, that faith would still be that, how quickly things would redivert back to, oh, okay, but you still have to do this to be able to get there. And they'll, they'll no, 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 but, 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 you're, but you're okay if, you, if, if, if we do this, you believe this, but did you do this over here? And it would just be like, whoa, like how quickly it, it just challenges, am I really saved? Am I really saved? If I know it says faith, but I still haven't done my works over here, so am I good? Mm-hmm. And so that, that, that verse just became more and more ingrained as we were talking about it. It was like I kept on going back to this, this verse and being like, look, look at what God's talking about in the Bible. Look at what Jesus did for us. Mm-hmm. And we don't see that in other faiths or other religions. Yeah, I didn't think we'd get into the five pillars, but I have a number of Islamic friends who there's genuine fear if they do not pray five times a day to Mecca, like if, or toward the east. If, if they forget to do that, there's fear. I forget to pray sometimes. I forget to read a passage of, of the Bible that I intend to. I don't fear that, though, that there's going to be an issue with, with God because of that. Um, yeah, go ahead. But part of that also comes into that relationship aspect, right? That God wants relationship with you. He understands what you're going through. He understands if, you know, oops, I, you know, I, I had this terrible accident today and I forgot to pray. He gets that. He understands that. Because he, because he walks with us. He walks beside you. Right? When we're trying to just please all the time and we're trying to just do everything that we're just told, we lose that or we don't have that relationship side of things. And so it's very easy, as I was even saying earlier, like what I, what I first believed about the Bible, like I had to know all these things, I had to do all this. I didn't have a relationship with, with God to come to those conclusions. If I did, I wouldn't have necessarily believed that, right? And so that relationship is profound and so cool that God, creator of everything, literally wants to know you yeah. and walk with you, despite whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for this opportunity to talk about what is on the heart of everyone on this planet, really. If, if there is a God, am I accepted by him? Do I need to merit his acceptance? God, thank you. Thank you for revealing through your word and through your son and through your spirit that no, it is not based on merit, it is based on sacrifice. Jesus, you died on a cross to ensure we could have a relationship with God. Father, thank you that we, uh, for many of us, Lord, that we ever came to that realization at some point in our lives. Um, God, we pray for everyone who's hearing this today that that will be their experience of trusting that finished work of Jesus as their, their basis of their salvation. And God, just surrender their lives to you. May we all do that. May that be the result of today. And Lord, may we be less fearful about being your witnesses. May we uh, enjoy and delight in telling this story that you've given us to tell. 
We thank you that you are at work in this world, Lord, of each of these world religions. There's multiple millions to 1.5 billion, but there are over 2 billion that would identify as followers of Jesus throughout this globe. And Father, we thank you for your gospel that continues to advance your kingdom, your church that is growing in this world. May, may it increase here in KW. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.